All right, we are live. Hello, Christian. How are you doing? Did I get window capturing going? I think I did, yeah. Should be all set to find and read some more books. Wait, is window capturing working? Should be. It's not popping up on my... I think it is. I'm just gonna assume it is. <laughs> Doing good, my man? Excited for lore? Me too. Also, finally... <laughs> finally. Finished... My notebook. Where I wrote down all the list of all the... All the books. So I can, you know, use that as a checklist now. And not have to... Be a lot better than just writing them down and then yeah all right so where am i actually i mean there's a city right there i suppose so that's caldera there's an indolon ancestral tomb i wonder are there any there might be some books in the ancestral tomb i don't but I feel like the type of books that would be in a tomb would be pretty, you know, they'd be more common books. Wouldn't be anything unique. I'm trying to think from the list of books that I wrote down if there would be anything that would... No, I don't think so. Well... I'm gonna check one more thing. Okay, yes. <laughs> the window capturing is working. For some reason, it's just not showing up on my laptop. Alright, well, I think the pawnbroker might be a nice place to start. Okay, got a red guard, Irgola. Um, so, let's not. Barter. He's got some books that I can just ling around. I mean, right away. Right off the bat. We've got a book here. I'm pretty sure I haven't read that. Um, Go ahead, stranger. Ooh. Cruel Flame Blade. That sounds looks interesting. Does look like that's the only book he has. Uh, a busy guy, so if you could hurry this up. And upstairs, Anytime. door is locked. Okay. Well, I guess we'll start off right away. The True Noble's Code. Oh, yes, this was one other thing that I thought of doing it is writing down timestamps so I can come back later on. And, uh, you know, put in timestamps for the, on the, in like the description or something. Uh, for when I read books. So, this would be four minutes in. Okay. Let me take one last sip. Alright. The True Noble's Code by Sir Joe Athen Serethi. The honorable warriors of the Great House Redoran are the hereditary defenders of Morrowind. To be a noble of House Redoran is more than being a great warrior. One must follow the uh, triune virtues of duty, gravity, and piety. A Redoran's duty is first to the Tribunal Temple, second to the Great House Redoran, and third to one's family and clan. In the Battle of Red Mountain, warriors of House Redoran died bravely for their duty to the Tribunal. By defending House Redoran from the from the schemes of the Telvanni wizards and the lies of untrustworthy Hlalu, the true noble shows duty to the House Redoran. Following the temple's guidelines of mercy and generosity, show duty to one's clan and family. A Redoran noble must know the virtue of gravity. 
It is not the Rhetoran way to laugh at serious matters, for it shows disrespect. It is not the Rhetoran way to spread rumors, for they fester and breed dissension. A Rhetoran must show piety to the Aedra and Daedra, our creators and ancestors, for without the divine we would not have the chance to serve, and without divine law we would not know right from wrong, and without giving thanks for these things we would forget our we would forget out place and our purpose. Great House Rhetoran praises all the skills of war, not because we believe war is good or honorable in its own right, but because this knowledge is necessary to perform one's duty. House Rhetoran's warrior fight with a long blade and shield, or with a spear. A noble of House Rhetoran must also learn to use a bow and must be athletic enough for, a long, for long marches to battle. A Rhetoran warrior wears heavy or medium armor depending on the rank and strategy. A noble of House Rhetoran is expected to know how to repair and maintain his armor. Those who are born to House Rhetoran have been taught their skills and virtues by kin and clan. Those who seek to enter House Rhetoran as retainers must satisfy an examiner in the Rhetoran Council Hall that their skills are suitable for service to House Rhetoran. Whether born to the blood of House Rhetoran or adopted into the service of House Rhetoran by oath, those who seek to advance in the ranks of House Rhetoran must demonstrate their virtues by service and obedience, and only when one has mastered all the skills and virtues can one truly call himself a noble of House Rhetoran. Sounds like a bunch of nerds. Kinda. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're like, you know, they're... They're very strict, you know, they're the guards. They're like the police, you know? They're the police and army combined. And the judges. Kind of. Not really, but, you know. They're... They're, uh... They're quite strict. Let's see. So this would be a faction book. Uh, let's see, Tree Nobles Code, yeah. So military police law? Pretty much. Wait, what? Here we go, found it. Wait. What the heck? I found it and then lost it. There it is, okay. Check mark. Also, was there a typo here? Um. Yeah, here we go. We would forget out place and our purpose. Is that is that a typo? I think it is. Unless I mean I don't think that's an R. That's fun. Um, but yeah, so Rhetoran, you know, military police. I guess they're... They're a kind of stuffy faction, but they've got some cool armor, I guess. Alright. Hello. Home of the Caldera Mining Company. All about business. Business is good. Okay, let's see if we can find... I don't know if there's a bookshop in this town. A clothier. I mean, it's possible they have a book. Uh, note to... Oh, wait, hold on. This is actually on the list of books. Te I mean, notes, but, you know, it technically counts. Um, note to... I think it is. Note to Fal Falanamu, my friend. I was wondering if you could send me an order of those new Nech leather shoes you were raving about last night. Come by the shovel anytime for a round on the house. You really must tell me more about your past on Somerset Isle sometime. Although, the next time, I hope you're sober enough to make sense. From Shank. Oh, so this person is from the Somerset Isles. That's interesting. I don't think you... 
I mean, they're probably like really stuck up then. It's my duty to help those less fortunate than myself. Yeah. Wow. He's very stuck up. <laughs> probably damn dirty elf. Yeah. No, people from Somerset are the worst. A uh, little piece of the Western Empire. Yeah. No. No, I don't know. The high elves from Somerset are the worst people. You know, all the, I mean, you know, Thalmor in general, I suppose, but. Yeah, let me check. I'm pretty sure this is on the list um, of books. Because, I mean, I just, like, took the list from. Um, from some website. It might not be. It was pretty short now, so. Looks like it's not. Okay. I thought it might be. Yeah, notes. There's only a couple of notes that count as books. Okay. So, it looks like he's not a all homies hate high elves. Yeah. No, high elves are... Yeah, they're, they're the worst. Yeah. Dude, you don't even read. Where are your books? You're the most uneducated shop owner I've come across so far, I'm pretty sure. Uh, there's the Mage's Guild. I don't think there were actually any books in the Mage's Guild. I mean, maybe he has some books behind locked doors in his personal quarters or something. Do you just have a paper list you're following? Because it would be fun to follow on a Google spreadsheet. Uh, I have a paper list because just because I like having notebooks. Um, but I could... I could mirror it on a Google spreadsheet pretty easily. And I actually am, I might do that uh, anyway. Um, like I'll update it after the stream. Um, I might do that anyway because, you know, it's good to have two copies. Make sure I'm following along properly. Uh, I Ruins of Kimelse. I think I've read. I think I read all these last time, didn't that? I? Misty Sands of Special Flora. Yeah, no, I read all these. This is cool looking. Devil Cephalopod Helm. Dude, I definitely need this. Can I buy it? Okay, how much is it? Actually, I don't think my character can even wear it. Which would suck, because I'm a Khajiit. Uh, so it's 1,700. Yeah, nowhere near that amount of cash. What's this then? I just like cephalopods, so a helm being named after a cephalopod would be pretty sweet. Let's see, the armor probably doesn't have any. It doesn't look like there's any bookkeepers. Or, I don't think there's a bookshop. Okay, this guy doesn't have any books at all. Hmm. Maybe it's just the... Caldera that's <laughs> doesn't have lots of books in it. I feel like the other towns I've been to, most of the shopkeepers had at least a couple books. Let's see... Shanks Shovel. Well, this guy was interested in Somerset, so Any time now. maybe he has some some cool stuff. Any time now. Love how the shadows glitch through the floor. I mean, probably nothing in the cupboard. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, Khajiit there. I suppose not. Locked doors here. I guess these are like the, the rooms that you can rent. Yep, no books. I could steal a bit of gold. You know, since you don't have any books, I'm gonna steal all your gold. 
this tiny bit that's up here. Is there anything else particularly valuable? No, not really. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'm not seeing a, any bookshop. I feel like the the castle in Caldera, uh, you know, where the the Lord of Caldera lives, is pretty likely to have some books at the very least. But, I mean, then again, even the Mage's Guild here didn't have any. Yeah. I've been thinking, maybe, like, when, when I finish reading all the books in Morrowind, maybe I should do the same in Skyrim, and then the same in Oblivion, and then the same in uh, Daggerfall and Arena. This town must have a bet, uh, bet ha must have had a book burning, yeah. It seems like it, there's like no books here. Like, even the starter town, which is, like, a poor little town, had more books than this place. Um, and then, you know, I'll play through all the Elder Scrolls games and read all the books and every single one of them. And then, you know, at the end, I can, I can say I've read every, every book in the Elder Scrolls. I feel like that would be a pretty impressive achievement. Damn, what the fuck? They don't have any books here. What the hell is going on with this place? What? What is... Okay, there's just a stairs leading to nowhere. I figured that was the plan to do all the Elder Scrolls games. It's an untapped market. Yeah. I mean, the part of the way I pretty much got the idea is there's this one youtuber that i really like called brian david gilbert and he did a video where he read every book in skyrim and you know he had a made a pretty funny video out of it anytime now um so that video i that video was so good i love that video um and that's kind of where i got the idea well i could Damn, they don't have any... What is going on with this place? Uh, that's pretty much, I guess, the inspiration. Because, yeah, he made a bunch of, like, really cool videos. Not on his own channel. Um, it was, like, a... It was part of a series that he did. Um, like, he read all the books in Skyrim. He read all the Halo novels. He read... Uh, I think those are the only two, like, book things from that series, but did this video about Waluigi and... Yes. I don't know. Damn. Yeah, they've got slightly tap market, yeah. No, I mean, that's... I'm sure there's other people who've done it as well. Um, like, I think I've seen some videos where somebody was reading books in Skyrim. Just, like... Um, just like the video is just him reading a book and then you know once you finish the book the video cut off um, so that gave me a bit of inspiration as well like maybe what is this about I could also that's oh wait hold on 2020 hearthfire no I've read that Major skill chart. Dang, they've got such shitty books here. What the hell? Okay, let's let's go somewhere else. Hmm. I feel like I've been to Aldrun. I don't think I've read all the books there though. I feel like Sadrith Mora is gonna be pretty interesting. Sadrith Mora or Vivek. Let's go to Sadrith Mora. I always get so lost in, in Vivek. It's such a big city. Also, go ahead and take all their stuff here. 
Invocation of Azura, I've read that. Book of Daedra. I don't know if I've read that. Also, do I have Invocation of Azura in my inventory? I don't, so I guess we'll take it anyway. I have read it, but... I do also want all the books in my... You know, I want to own all the books. Okay. Seems they've only... Oh, there's some more books back here. Origin, Galarian, Anthony Anuad. I've read all those. I don't recall using teleportation. Do I know you? And yet there I was. Alone. Oh, also I should check Can you ask you whether they have any good them. spells that I could buy. So it looks like she's got a bunch of illusion type stuff, which is decent. Ooh, soul trap. Definitely need this. Can you ask your question quickly? I must be Okay, that's the teleporter. I suppose I could spare uh, part of the training. Training. Okay. So the Wolverine Hollow on its own isn't gonna be, you know. The Imperial area Let's of Sadrith Mora is not gonna have much, I don't think. But actually, isn't he the guy? I mean, he has some good spells as well, doesn't he? I don't know, but there's some, like, barter thing that he has that's really good. I'm pretty sure there's, like, an infinite glitch where, you know, where you can buy ingredients from him infinitely as well, and he has... I don't remember which two ingredients. But he has two ingredients that combine very well together to make like some potion. I don't remember which one. Some pretty useful potion. I think maybe like a f it might have been like a fortify intelligence potion that he can that you can make with him. I don't quite remember though. Alright, Sadrith Mora is a pretty cool place, and it is the headquarters, I suppose, of um, House Talvani. And you know, House Talvani, they're mages, so I figure they're probably going to have quite a what few books. Quickly. And hopefully I'll also have a bookstore. The Corner Club probably isn't going to have anything. Yeah. Uh, ooh, is that a book? I'm nope. Listening. You need to find some book stats. Gotta get the to to baby sleep. All right. I know. Th I know. There's gonna be some books over here. Let's go. Say right. your business. Come on. It's just part of the thing here is as it goes, it's gonna be harder and harder to find books because I've read. So many of them. Okay, come on. I don't, not to put any pressure on you. No, it's all good. I do also want to find books myself. Okay. This should be... Maybe... Hole in the wall. That's not going to have any. I mean, it might, but... Gotta, gotta go fast. Um, I mean, hold on. There's probably some over here. This is the council hall. Whatever so I feel like the council sure probably has some. Probably not in the basement, actually. Ugh, basement's so long. Okay, here we go. Yes. I don't have a lot of patience. 2090 Fairs of Wizard. I read that. Well, I'm pretty sure I haven't read this one. 
we'll read this one. <clears throat> Frostfall, Book 10 of 2920, The Last Era of the First Era, or The Last Year of the First Era, by Karlovak Townway. 10 Frostfall, 2920, Regias High Rock. The creatures before them blinked, senseless, its eyes glazed, mouth opening and closing as if relearning its functions. A thin glob of saliva burbled down between its fangs and hung suspended. Turala had never seen anything of its kind before, reptilian and massive, perched on its hind legs like a man. Ministera applauded enthusiastically. My child, she crowed. You have come so far in a, such a short time. What were you thinking when you summoned this Daedroth? It took Turala a moment to recall whether she was thinking of anything at all. She was merely overwhelmed that she had reached out across the fabric of reality into the realm of oblivion and plucked forth this loathsome creature, conjuring it into the world by the power of her mind. I was thinking of the color red, Turala said, concentrating, the simplicity and the clarity of it. And then I desired, and spoke the charm, and this is what I conjured up. Desire is a powerful force for a young witch, said Ministera, and it is well matched in this instance, for this Daedroth is nothing if not a simple force of the spirits. Can you release your desire as easily? Turala closed her eyes and spoke the dismissal invocation. The monster faded away like a painting in the sunlight, still blinking confusedly. Ministera embraced her dark elf pupil, laughing with delight. I never would have believed it. A month and a day you've been with the coven, and you've already far and you're already far more advanced than most of the women here. There is powerful blood in you, Turala. You touch spirits like you were touching a lover. You'll be leading this coven one day. I have seen it. Turala smiled. It was good to be complimented. The Duke of Mornhold had praised her pretty face and her family before she had dishonored them, praised her manners. Kassir had been nothing more than a companion. His compliments meant nothing. But with Ministera, she felt she was home. You'll be leading the coven for many years yet, great sister, said Turala. I certainly intend to. But the spirits, while marvelous companions and faultless tellers of the truth, are often hazy about the when and hows. You can't blame them, really. When and how means so little to them. Ministera opened the door to the shed, allowing the brisk autumn breeze in to dispel the bitter and fetid smells of the Daedroth. Now, I need you to run an errand to Wayrest. It's only a week's ride there and a week's ride back. Bring Dor Riatha and Self Selafina with you. As much as we try to be self-sufficient, there are herbs we can't grow here and we seem to run through an enormous quantity of gems in no time at all. It's important that the people of the city learn to recognize you as one of the wise women of Skeffington Coven. You'll find the benefits of being notorious far outweigh the inconveniences. Turella did as she was bade. As she and her sisters climbed aboard their horses, Ministera brought her child, little five-month-old Bosriel, to kiss her mother goodbye. The witches were in love with the little Dunmer infant, fathered by a wicked duke and birthed by wild Aelid elves in the force heart of the empire, Turella knew her nursemaids would protect her child with their lives. After many kisses and a farewell wave, the three young witches w rode off into the bright woods under a covering of red, yellow, and orange. Twelfth Frostfall, 2920, Dwinanen High Rock. For a midis evening, the least loved porcupine tavern was wildly crowded. A roaring fire in the pit in the center of the room cast an almost sinister glow on all the regulars and made the abundance of bodies look like a punishment tapestry inspired by the Arcturian heresies. Cassir took his usual place with his cousin and ordered a flagon of ale. Have you been to see the Baron? asked Palat. Yes, he may have worked for me in the palace of Urvaeus, said Cassir proudly. But more than that, I can't say. You understand. The secrets of the state and all that. Why are there so many damned people here tonight? A shipload of dark elves just came into the harbor. They've come from the war. I was just waiting until you got here to introduce you as another w veteran. 
Cassier blushed, but regained his composure enough to ask, What are they doing here? Has there been a truce? I don't know the full story, said Palath, but apparently the Emperor and Vivek are in negotiations again. These fellows here have investments they were keen to check on, and they figured things on the bay were quiet enough. But the only way we can get the full story is to talk to the chaps. With that, Palath gripped his cousin's arms and pulled him to the other side of the bar. So suddenly, Caster would have had to struggle violently to resist. The Dunmer travelers were spread out across four of the tables, laughing with the locals. They were largely amiable young men, well-dressed, with fitting of merchants, animated in gesture, made more extravagant by liquor. Excuse me, said Palath, intruding on the conversation. My shy cousin Kassir was in the war as well, fighting for the living god Vivek. The only Kassir I ever heard of, said one of the dumber drunkenly with a wide, friendly smile, shaking Kassir's free hand, was a Kassir Whitley, who Vivek said was the worst spy in history. We lost Ald Marak due to his bungling intelligence work for your sake, friend. I hope the two of you were never confused. Kassir smiled and listened as Lout told the story of his failure with bountiful exaggerations, which caused the table to roar with laughter. Several eyes looked his way, but none of the locals sought to explain that the fool of the tale was standing at attention. The eyes that stung were the most were his cousins, the young man who had believed that he had returned to Dwinin a great hero. At some point, uh, certainly, the Baron would hear about it, his idiosity increasing manifold with each retelling. With every fiber in his soul, Cassir cursed the living god Vivek. 21st Frostfall, 2920. The Imperial City, Cyrodiil. Corda, in a robe of blinding whiteness, a uniform of the priestess of Hegathe, Morwa Conservatorium, arrived in the city just as the first winter storm was passing. The clouds broke with sunlight, the beauteous teenage Redegard girl appeared in the white a wide avenue with escort, riding toward the palace. While her sister was tall, thin, angular, and haughty, Corda was a small, round-faced lass with b wide brown eyes. The locals were quick to draw comparisons. Not a month after Lady Ruja's execution, muttered a housemaid, peering out the window and winking to her neighbor, and not a month out of the nunnery either, the other woman agreed, reveling in the scandal. This one's in for a ride. Her sister weren't no innocent, and look where she ended up. 24th Frostfall, 2920, Dwinin High Rock. Cassir stood on the harbor and watched the early sleet fall on the water. It was a pity, he thought, that he was prone to seasickness. There was nothing for him now in Tamriel, to the east or to the west. Vivek's tale of his poor spycraft has spread to the taverns everywhere. The Baron of Dwinin had released him from his contract. No doubt they were laughing about him in Daggerfall too. And Dawnstar, Little Moth, Rimmon, Greenheart, probably an Akavir and Yakuda, for that matter. Perhaps it would be best to drop into the waves and sink. The thought, however, did not stay long in his mind. It was not despair that haunted him, but rage. Impotent fury that he could not assuage. Excuse me, sir, said a voice behind him, making him jump. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was wondering whether you could recommend an inexpensive tavern for me to spend the night. It was a young man, a Nord, with a sack over his shoulder. Obviously, he had just disembarked from one of the boats. For the first time in weeks, someone was looking at Cassier as something other than a colossal, famous idiot. He could not help black as his mood was, but be friendly. You've just arrived from Skyrim? asked Cassier. No, sir, that's where I'm going, said the fellow. I'm working my way home. I've come up from Sentinel, and before that, Strauss Mackay, and before that, Woodhearth and Valenwood, and before that, Artaim and Somerset. Welleg's my name. Cassier introduced himself and shook Welleg's hand. Did you say you came from Artaim? Are you a Sigic? No, sir, not anymore. The fellow shrugged. I was expelled. Do you know anything about summoning Daedra? You see, I want to cast a curse against a particularly powerful person. One might say, a living god. I haven't had any luck. The Baron won't allow me in his sight, but the Baroness has symp sympathy for me and allowed me the, the use of their summoning chambers. Cassier spat. 
I did all the rituals, made sacrifices, but nothing came of it. That'd be because of Sothasil, my old master, replied Weleg, with some bitterness. The Daedra princes have agreed not to be summoned by any amateurs, at least until the war ends. Only the Sidics may counsel with the Daedra, and a few nomadic sorcerers and witches. Witches, you say? 29th Frostfall, 2920. Birga... Frigus, Frigius High Rock. Pale sunlight flickered behind the mist, bathing the forest as Turala, Dorithatha, and Selefina drove their horses on. The ground was wet with a thin layer of frost and laden down with goods. It was, slip it was a slippery way over the unpaved hills. Turala tried to contain her excitement about coming back to the coven. Wayrest had been an adventure, and she adored the looks of fear and respect the city folk gave her. But for the last few days, all she could think of was returning to her sisters and her child. A bitter wind whipped her hair forward so she could see nothing but the path ahead. She did not hear the rider approach to her side until he was almost upon her. When she turned and saw Kassir, she shouted with as much surprise as pleasure at meeting an old friend. His face was pale and drawn, but she took it to be merely from travel. What brings you back to Phrygius? she smiled. Were you not treated well in Dwinnen? Well enough, said Cassier. I have need of the Skeffington Coven. Ride with us, said Turala. I'll bring you to Ministera. The four continued on, and the witches regaled Cassier with tales of wayrest. It was evident that it was also a rare treat for Duryatha and Salafina to leave old Barabin's Barbin's farm. They had been there as daughters and granddaughters of Skeffington witches. Ordinary High Rock City life was exotic to them, as it was to Turala. Kassir said little, but smiled and nodded his head, which was encouragement enough. Thankfully, none of the stories they had heard were about his own stupidity, or at the very least, they did not tell him. Doriatha was in the midst of a tale she heard in the tavern about a thief who had been locked overnight in a pawn shop. When they crossed over a familiar hill, Suddenly, she halted in her story. The barn was supposed to be visible, but it was not. The other three followed her gaze into the fog, and a moment later, they rode as fast as they could towards what was once the site of Kevington Coven. The fire had long since burned out. Nothing but ashes, skeletons, and broken weaponry remained. Cassir recognized at once the signs of an orc raid. The witches fell from their horses. Racing through the remains, wailing, Selefina found a tattered, bloody piece of cloth that she recognized from Ministera's cloak. She held it to her ashen face, sobbing. Turala screamed for Basriel, but the only reply was the high, whistling wind through the ashes. Who did this? she cried, tears streaking down her face. I swear I'll conjure up the very flames of, obli of oblivion. What have they done with my baby? I know who did it, said Kassir quietly, dropping from his horse and walking towards her. I've seen these weapons before. I fear I met the very fiends responsible in Dwinnen, but I never thought they'd find you. This is the work of assassins hired by the Duke of Mornhold. He paused. The lie came easily. Adopt and improvise. What's more, he could tell instantly that she believed it. Her resentment over the cruelty the duke had shown her had quieted, but never disappeared. One look at her burning eyes told him that she would summon the Daedra and wreck his, and her, revenge upon Morrowind. And what's more, he knew they'd listen. And listen they did, for the power that is greater than desire is rage. Even rage misplaced. Man. What a shitty guy Cassier is. Dude, the 2920 books are so good. What the fuck? I, I think I've only read two of them so far, but they're really good. I don't know, they're, um... As a Christian there said, this very homey. This book has no is homier than it has any reason being. Yeah, it's really good. I, I don't know. The last one, because the last one I read, I think, was uh, the previous one to this. So let's mark it off here. If I can find where where it is on the notebook. Here we go. Yeah, so I read 
The only one I've read so far was book 9, and this is book 10. But both of them, the 2,920 books, very good. Last year of the first era. Okay. Little paper, scroll of the mind. Okay, let's, let's see, hold on. I think Affairs of the Wizard, I can check if I've read it. I don't, I, I'm honestly not sure at all. So it would be probably a faction one. That was a good one. I got a little lost in, uh, as in forgot you were reading books in Morrowind. That's how good it was. Yeah, me too. Dude, I was, I'm invested. I can't wait to find more of the 2,920 books. Okay, yeah, no, I've I have read Affairs of the Wizards. The 2920, talk to great year. Vagaries of Magicka. Pretty sure I haven't read this. Oh, this is two pages. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, you find all 2920 of them. Uh, well, there's only, sadly, I think there's only, like, ten. Um, I don't remember how many it is, but it, it would be great if there were that many. Uh, yeah, there's, there's twelve of them. They're pretty long, though, compared to most of the other books. Alright, let's see. A passage from the text, The Va Va Vagaries of Magicka. But take care, lest power effable the fundamentals and curtails the flow through conjuries, except when functions be warranted, and safeguard that the conjuries shall not be abused by prideful wizards, confident in their skill and blinded by their ambi ambitions. In this, hold the ordering of the conjuries among the oldest and most trusted of mages, and make secure this ordering through arcane codes and keys to confound even the most clever students. The restorals must be the most carefully guarded, for how often have the wise lusted to overreach their bodies and souls with vitality and magicka, and also must the magicka fountains be dampened and banked, sanctioned their engendering only to the re reconsecration of essential arcane engines and templates and only by common assent of the council. Huh, okay. So this is kind of saying, I'm guessing this is applying to the um, house, um, oh, what's the house called? Why am I blanking on it now? Um, oh man, I don't remember, what's that? The mage's house from Morrowind, I'm guessing this is from their perspective. Dude, you're actually insane for this, holy. Dude, it's so fun. I love it. Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> okay, the bash major reason. Yeah, I have no clue what this one's about. Also, I don't remember even writing this one down on the list. Books that need to be read. Uh, Spirit of the Daedra. That one... You know, honestly, having the list like this, I should have done it just by, like, alphabetical order and not, or, you know, not the way I did it, which was by category and then alphabetical. Okay, I mean, Spirit of the Danger, that's probably going to be in religious texts. Yes, I haven't read Spirit of the Daedra. You missed him saying you might do all do it for all the Elder Scrolls games. Dude, it would be so interesting. I mean, okay. A lot of the books in Skyrim are also in Morrowind. Um, so, it would probably be like... There's probably only like... 100 short books. Probably not even that many in Skyrim. That aren't in Morrowind. As someone that hates reading, this dude is a monster to me. Yeah, I used to hate reading as well. Recently, I've I've started really enjoying it. Um, you know, 
as evidenced by this. This <laughs> is so fun to me, but uh, yeah, all the lore. I will know everything. All right, let's see. So this is Spirit of the Daedra. Take another sip. Ah, a pen. Okay. Spirit of the Daedra. How you should know us. Death, defeat, and fear. We do not die. We do not fear death. Destroy the body and the animus is cast into the darkness, but the animus returns. But we are not all brave. We feel pain and fear it. We feel shame and fear it. We feel loss and fear it. We hate the darkness and fear it. The scamps have small thoughts and cannot fear greatly. The vermai have no thoughts and cannot fear. The dramora have deep thoughts and must master fear to overcome it. The clan bond. We are not born, we have not fathers nor mothers, yet we have kin and clans. The clan form is strong, it shapes body and thoughts. In the clan form is strength and purpose. The oath bond. We serve by choice, we serve the strong so that their strength might shield us. Clans serve by long practice, but practice may change. Dramor have long served Dagon, but not always so. Practice is secure when oath bonds are secure, and trust is shared. When oath bonds are weak, there is pain and shame, and loss and darkness and great fear. How we think about man. Perhaps you find scamps comic, and vermi brutish. How then do you imagine we view humans? You are the prey, and we are the huntsmen. The scamps are the hounds, and the vermi are the beaters. Your flesh is sweet, and the chase is diverting. As you may sometimes praise the fox or hare, admiring its cunning and speed, and lamenting as the hounds tear its flesh, so do we sometimes admire our prey, and secretly applaud when it cheats or our snares or eludes pursuit. But like all worldly things, you will, in time, wear and be used up. You age, grow ugly, weak and foolish. You're always lost, late or soon. Sometimes the prey turns upon us and bites. It is a small thing. When wounded or wary, we fly away to restore. Sometimes a precious thing is lost, but, the ra but that risk makes the chase all the sweeter. Man's mystery. Man is mortal and doomed to death and failure and loss. This, this lies beyond our comprehension. Why? Do you not despair? Really enjoying reading because of this sounds like Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know, I don't enjoy reading because of this. Um, but the Stockholm Syndrome is still a, still a fair point because the reason why I started reading is just because I ran out of stuff to watch. Like, on YouTube and stuff, I, I was watching so much YouTube that I, like, ran out of... I, I, I couldn't find more YouTube to watch that I liked. And then the same thing with, like, TV shows and anime. And I just, I just ran out of stuff to consume. So then I started reading. Uh, you know, it was, it was, like, last... You know, I'd exhausted all options, and then I was like... Fine, I'll read. Cause one of the one of the like um one of the things that I was like watching was based off of a book, or it was like based off of a uh, well, it was based off of a web novel, which was like three thousand chapters long, an insane length. Like it was if like in book terms, it was like thirty books long, and uh, then they made like eventually an anime based off of it um and i was like you know what you know i finished the anime i finished the all of it the the comic that the anime was based on and the comic was i guess based on the web novel down the line all the way and i was like you know what i'm just gonna read the book and um yeah i read read that entire thing <laughs> and then i kept you know, reading these insanely long books, and I was like, you know what, actually, 
Reading's fine. Reading's good. I like it. You know, it's definitely, definitely not a Stockholm Syndrome response. Spit it out or hit the road. Book of Third Era, 426. That might be interesting. You talk too Special much Flora. Actually, hold on. I might have read this already. Oh, Lord. So this is your future? I'm scared. It might be. No, but there's so many, like, no. There's lots of stuff to read. Hopefully, I won't run out of it in the coming future. Like I do with all, <laughs> like I have with all the other content. I mean, you know. Reading every book in Morrowind is probably going to take ages. And then, you know, doing the same for all the other Elder Scrolls games. So, it's going to keep me busy and entertained for a while. You're reading Blood Meridian right now? It's brutal. I haven't heard of that book. What is that about? What's, what's called the, the Brown Book. Well, I'm pretty sure I haven't read it, so I'll just read it, and then based off of the book, I can probably tell what category it's going to fall into. Oh, it was one of these really boring ones. Yeah. Alright, well, I'll still read through it. The brown book and, the, like, the yellow book, they're all really annoying. Telvani, that's the name I was thinking of. It's pretty anchored historical fiction, a gang that killed natives and sold their scalps to the Mexican government after the Mexican-American War. Damn. Sounds brutal. Alright, yeah. I already know this book's not going to be the most fun. Brown Book of Great House Telvani. The Brown Book is a yearbook of the affairs of the Telvani Council of Vardenfell District for Third Era, 426. It lists the current members of the council, their residences, their representatives in Sadrith Mora. It also chronicles significant events and council actions for the year. Councillors of House Salvani, Vardenfeld District, Imperial Era, 426. Archmagister Gothrin, Lord High Mate Magus of Telvani Council, Vardenfeld District, Tower of Tel Arun, East Molag Amor, District of Vardenfeld, Province of Morrowind. Master Aryan, Mage Lord of Telvani Council, Vardenfell District, Tower of Telvas, Village of Vas, the Grayslands, District of Vardenfell, Province of Morrowind. Master Neloff, Mage Lord of Telvani Council, Vardenfell District, Tower of Telnaga, Sadrith Mora, District of Vardenfell, Province of Morrowind. Mr. Strafa, I'm just going to skip over this because this is just. This, that's the boring part. Completely annoying to read. I, no, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> Mr. Stratha, Mage Lord of Telvani Council, Vardenfell District, Tower of Telmora, the Grey's Lands, District of Vardenfell, Province of Morwind. Mr. Thurana, Mage Lord of Telvani Council, Vardenfell District, Tower of Telbrunora, Azura's Coast, District of Vardenfell, Province of Morwind. Council Representatives of House Telvani Council Hall, Sadrith Mora. For Archmaster Gothrin, Math Malam Rion. Mage for Master Aryan, Mouth Aurora of Uvulas. For Master Naloth, Mas Mouth Raven Omain. For Mistress Thorana, Belisa Ulison. For Mistress Dratha, Mouth Malam Rion. Council actions. This should at least be a little bit more interesting, hopefully. In response to repeated protests from Duke Dren re and representatives of the other great houses, Telvani Council reminded them that according to ancient law and custom, Telvani Council places no constraints on the ambitions and enterprises of its individual members. If the Empire or other house councils wish to dispute Telvani exploration and colonization of the wastes and wilderness of Vardenfell, they are welcome to do so, with the councillor's best wishes. But Telvani Council will not contribute its resources or authority to such endeavors. The Council renews its objection to proposals placed before Duke Dren and Grand Council concerning slavery and slave trading in Vardenfell District. The right to own and trade slaves is guaranteed by the terms of the Treaty of the Armistices 
and Telvanni Council will not entertain any discussion of abridgments of those rights. Okay. Reading simulator. Yep. Hello, Jasper. Lots of reading today. Yeah, so Telvani, they're, uh, you know, they're just, I guess they're just like, yeah, you can, you know, we don't control what our members do. You can try to, you know, you can try to co go after them, but I don't think you're going to have any luck with that. And uh, very much for slavery. Um, yeah, the Telvani are probably the most uh zealous slave owners let's see so this is probably a faction book yep brown book there we go one more book down let's see so brown book we've read now uh special flora i've read already wooden chance just a bunch of potions i haven't done any school work today Oof. You're procrastinating. I do that so much. I procrastinate everything. Yes, sir. Probably gonna stay up till two like you did last night. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, that's what procrastination does. You end up doing that every single day. I don't know. I'm like a master procrastinator. I procrastinate literally everything. Book of Dawn and Dusk, I've read that. Ooh, lots of books here. Procrastination t unite tomorrow. Yeah. No, it's so bad. I don't... <laughs> it's so bad for me. Like, I'll literally... I will literally... Like, sometimes it'll be like, just like a little thing. Like, Go, you know, like, go grab a glass of water. And I'll be like, I'll do it in a minute. And then the minute passes. Yeah, I'll just do it in, like, five minutes. And then, ah, oh, dude, it's too much trouble. How about ten minutes? And then fifteen, and then thirty minutes, and then an hour. And then, like, five hours have passed, and I'm like, oh my god, I still haven't gotten my glass of water. What the hell's up with me? And then, you know, five hours have already passed. I'll just drink tomorrow. Uh, I've read most of these books, haven't I? Pilgrim's Path, I don't recognize. Let's see. Uh, Varieties of Faith, I maybe haven't read. I'm not sure on that one. I feel like that one's gonna be that one's interesting. Yeah, varieties of faith in the empire. I'm pretty sure. You had to use Linux today because your Python libraries weren't important properly on Windows. Yeah, things just work on Linux, you know. It never breaks ever. It's so stable. <laughs> Hundred percent. All right, varieties of faith is probably gonna be interesting. You know, I definitely didn't have any issues today with uh, software not working properly. Not at all. That's so wrong, though. I'm out. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not... The disk I'm on right now is pretty stable. Um, it works really weird, though, so setting things up sometimes is really annoying. The documentation is horrid. Oh, man, the documentation. Oof. So bad. <laughs> on NixOS. Um... <laughs> Coming from like Arch Linux, it's disgusting how bad the <laughs> documentation is. But yeah, it's generally pretty pretty stable. Usually, I don't have any problems with the distro. I have problems with like the programs that I'm running, not related to the distro. All right. Varieties of Faith in the Empire by Brother Mikhail Karkuksor of the Imperial College. This is my best attempt at listing at 
At a listing of the pantheons and associated divine spirits of Tamriel's dominant cultures, this list is by no means complete. The imperial city of Cyrodiil alone boasts a vast host of saints and holy spirits. It only includes the most important spirits revered by native members of the culture. Other Etada, especially Daedra, are often familiar, known to many cultures. Though specific names are included here only when they possess a particular cultural significance. The omission of any reference to the worships of the Argonians of Blackmarsh is a result of my complete inadequacy in reconciling the obscure and contradictory accounts available to me on that subject. The Eight Pantheons Cyrodiil, Akatosh, Debella, Arche, Zenithar, Mara, Stendar, Kinnereth, Julianos, Shazar, Tiber Septum, Morehouse, and Riemann, Skyrim, Alduin, Debella, Orke, Tsun, Mara, Stun, Kin, Kain, Junal, Shor, Yzmir, Herma, Mora, Malak, Altmer, Ariel, Trinamac, Magnus, Sirabane, Yifri, Xarxes, Mara, Stendar, Lorcan, Finaster, Bosmer, Oriel, Yifir, Arke, Zen, Xarxes, Bandar, Mara, Stendar, Lorcan, Herma, Mora, Joan, Jode. Dunmer, Almalexia, Vivex, Sothasil, Boethia, Mephala, Azura, Lorcan, Nerevar, Molag, Bal, Malakas, Shigorath, Merun's Dagon, Yakudas, Satakal, Ruptga, Tuwaka, Zet, Morwa, Tava, Maluk, Diagna, Sep, Hunding, Leki, Ansi, Bret Bretany, Akatosh, Magnus, Yifiri, Yifri, Debella, Arke, Zenithar, Marish, Stendar, Kinnereth, Juliana, Shior, Finaster, Elsewhere, Alkosh, Kenarthi, Kenar Riddle, Tar, Chikaje, Mara, Shrendar, Lorkaj, Rajin, Bandar, Azura, Shugorath. Ugh. Notes on the Divine Spirits of the Pantheons Akatosh, Dragon God of Time Akatosh is the chief deity of the Nine Divines, the major religious cult of the Cyrodiil and its provinces, and one of the two deities found in every Tamrielic religion. The other is Lorcan. He is generally considered to be the first of the gods to form in the beginning place. After his establishment, other spirits found the process of being easier, and various pantha pantheons of the world emerged. He is the ultimate god of the Cyrodiilic Empire, where he embodies the qualities of endurance, invincibility, and everlasting legitimacy. Alduin, World Eater Alduin is the Nordic variation of Akatosh, and only superficially resembles his counterpart in the Nine Divines. For example, Alduin's uh, sobriquet World Eater comes from the myths that depict him as the horrible, ravaging firestorm that destroyed the last world to begin this one. Nords, therefore, see the god of time as both creator and harbinger of the apocalypse. He's not the chief of the Nordic pantheon, in fact, that pantheon has no chief. See shore below. But it's Wellspring, albeit a grim and frightening one. Alkosh Dragon King of Cats Preridata Dynasty Anaquinine Deity A variation of the, on the Alt Mary Oriel and thus an Akatosh as culture hero for the earliest Khajiit. His worship was co-opted during the establishment of the Riddle Tar and he still enjoys immense popularity in Elsewhere's Wasteland regions. He's depicted as a fearsome dragon, a creature the Khajiit say is just a real big cat. He repelled an early Aldmeri uh, pogrom of Polenial White Strike uh, during mythic times. Almalexia, Mother of Morrowind. Most traces, most traces of Akatosh disappeared from ancient Chimer legends during their so-called exodus. Primarily due to that god's association and esteem with the Alt Mary. However, most aspects of Akatosh, which seem so important to the mortal races, namely immortality, historicity, 
and genealogy have conveniently resurfaced in Al Malexia, the most popular of Morwen's divine tribunal. Arkei, god of the cycle of life and death, member of the Nine Divines pantheon and popular elsewhere as well, Arkei is often more prominent in those cultures where his father, Akatosh, is either less related to time or where his time aspects are difficult to comprehend by the layman. He is the god of burials and funeral rites, and is sometimes associated with the seasons. His priests are staunch opponents of necromancy and all forms of the undead. It is said that Arkei did not exist before the world was created by the gods under Lorcan. Supervision, urging trickery. Therefore, he is sometimes called the mortal's god. Oriel, king of the Aldmer. The elven Akatosh is Oriel. Oriel is the soul of Anuiel, who in turn is the soul of Anu, the everything. He is the chief of the Most Aldmeri pantheons. Most Aldmeri and Bosmeri claim direct descent from Oriel. In his only known moment of weakness, he agreed to take his part in the creation of the mortal plane. That act, which forever sundered the elves from the spirit worlds of the eternity. To make up for it, Oriel led the original Aldmer against the armies of Lorcan in mythic times, vanquishing that tyrant and establishing the first kingdom of the Aldmer. Altmora and the old Elnafe, he then ascended to heaven in full observance of his followers so that they might learn the steps needed to escape the mortal plane. Azura goddess of dusk and dawn. Azura was the god ancestor that taught the Chimer the, myster the mysteries needed to be different than the Altmer. Some of her more conventional teachings are sometimes attributed to Boethia. In the stories, Azura is often more a communal cosmic force for the race as a whole than an ancestor or a god, also known as the anticipation of Sosthasil. In Elsewhere, Azura is nearly a wholly separate entity, yet she is still tied into the origins of the Khajiit out of Altmeri stock. Bandar, the bandit god. In most religions, Bandar is a marginal deity, a trickster spirit of thieves and beggars. And elsewhere, he's more important and is regarded as the pariah. In this aspect, Bandar becomes the cleverness or desperate genius of the long-suffering Khajiit whose last-minute plans always upset the machinations of their elven or human enemies. Boethia, Prince of Plots Heralded by the Prophet Veloth Boethia is the original god ancestor of the Dark Elves, though through his illuminations, the eventual Chimer, or Changed Folk, renounced all ties to the Altmer and founded a new nation based on Daedric principles. All manner of dark elven cultural advances are attributed to Boethia, from philosophy to magic to responsible architecture. Ancient Velothi allegories are uniformly heroic successes of Boethia over enemies of every type. Foundation stories of the Chimeri struggle, also known as the Anticipations of Almalexia. Uh, Diagna. Orichalc, god of the sideways blade. Ori, thuggish cult of the Red Guards, originated in Yakuda during the 27 snake folk slaughter. Diagna was an avatar of Hunding, the Yakudan god of make way, see, make of, god of make way, see below, that achieved performance. He was instrumental to the defeat of the left-handed elves as he. Uh, brought Orichalc weapons to the Kukudan people to win the fight. In Tamriel, he led a, a very tight-knit group of followers against the orcs of Orsinium during the height of their ancient power, but then faded into obscurity. He is now little more than a local power spirit of the Dragontail Mountains. Debella, goddess of beauty, popular god of the Nine Divines. In Cyrodiil, she has nearly a dozen different cults, some devoted to women, some to artists and aesthetics, and others to erotic instruction. Hermamora, the Woodland Man, ancient at Morn demon who at one time nearly seduced the Nords into becoming Altmer. Most Ysgrimor myths are about escaping the wilds of old Hermamora, 
also called the Demon of Knowledge. He's vaguely related to the cult origins of the Morag Tong, Forester's Guild, if only by association with his brother slash sister, Mephala. Hun Ding, the Makeway God, Yakudan spirit of perseverance over, over infidels. The Hunding has historically materialized whenever the Red Guards need to make way for their people. In Tamrielic history, this has only happened three times. Twice in the First Era during the Ragata invasion, and once during the Tiber War. In this last incarnation, the Hunding was said to have been either a sword or a crown, or both. Junal, a rune god. The Nordic god of hermetic orders. After falling out of favor with the rest of that pantheon, he became Julianus of the Nine Divines. He is absent in modern Skyrim mythology. Jode, Big Moon God. Aldmeri God of the Big Moon, also called Masser or Marastir. In Kajidia religion, Jode is the only one aspect of the Lunar Lattice, or Jakaje. Joan, Little Moon God. Aldmeri God of the Little Moon also called Secunda or Stendar Sorrow. In Khajiiti religion, Joan is only one aspect of the Lunar Lattice, or Jacaje. Uh, Julianos, God of Wisdom and Logic, often associated with Junal, the Nordic father of language and mathematics. Julianos is the Cyrodelic God of literature, law, history, and contradiction. Monastic orders founded by Tiber Septim and dedicated to Julianos are the keepers of the Elder Scrolls. Kine, kiss at the end. Nordic goddess of the storm, widow of shore and favored god of warriors. She is often called the mother of men. Her daughters taught the first Nords the use of the thum, or storm voice. Kinnereth, goddess of air. Kinnereth is a member of the Nine Divines, the strongest of the Sky Spirits. In some legends, she is the first to agree to Lorcan's plan to invent the mortal plane, and provides a space for its creation in the Void. She is also associated with rain, a phenomenon said not to occur before the removal of Lorcan's divine spark. Leki, Saint of the Spirit Sword, Goddess Daughter of Tal Papa, Leki is the goddess of aberrant swordsmanship. The Na Tatambu of Yakuda warred to a standstill during the mythic era to decide who would lead the charge against the left-handed elves. Their swordsmasters, though, were so skilled in the best-known cuts as to be matched evenly. Leki introduced the elf ephemeral feint. Afterwards, a victor emerged, and the war with Aldmer began. Lorcan, the missing god. This creator, trickster, tester, deity is in every Tamarelic mythic tradition. His most popular name is the Aldmeri Lorcan, or Doom Drum. He convinced, or contrived, the original spirits to bring about the creation of the mortal plane, upsetting the status quo much like his father Padme had introduced instability into the universe in the beginning place. After the world materialized, Lorcan is separated from his divine center sometimes involuntarily, and wanders the creation of the Etata, he and his myth metaphysical placement in the scheme of things is interpreted a variety of ways. In Morrowind, for example, he is a being related to the Sigic Endeavor, a process by which mortals are charged with transcending the gods that created them. To the High Elves, he is the most unholy of all high powers, as he forever broke their connection to the spirit plane. In the legends, he is almost always an enemy of the Aldmer, and therefore a hero of early mankind. Lorcage, Moon Beast, Pre Redada dynasty and equine deity, easily identified with the missing god, Lorcan. Magnus, Magnus, Magus, uh, the god of sorcery. Magnus withdrew from the creation of the world at the last second, though it cost him dearly. What is left of him in the world is felt and controlled by mortals as magic. 
One story says that while the idea was thought up by Lorcan, it was Magnus who created the schematics and diagrams needed to construct the mortal plane. He is sometimes represented by an astrolabe, a telescope, or more commonly, a staff. Cyrodiilic legends say he can inhabit the bodies of powerful magicians and lend them his power, associated with Zurin Arct Zurin Arctus, the Underking. Malakath, God of Curses Malakath is a reanimated dung that was Trinimac, a somewhat weak but vengeful Daedra that the Dark Elves say is also Malak the god king of the orcs. He always tests the dumber for physical weakness. Maluk, horde king, an enemy of the god of uh, an enemy god of the Ragada, led the goblins against the red guards during the first era, fled east when the army of the Hunding overtook his goblin hordes. Whew. Uh Malak Malakath, an orcish god, Malak troubled the heirs of the King Harold for a long time, f uh, fled, ca fled east after his defeat at the Battle of Dragon Wall, uh, CA 1st era 666, uh, 660. His rage was said to fill the sky with his sulfurous hatred, later called the Year of Winter and Summer. Mara, goddess of love, Nearly universal goddess, origin started in mythic times as a fertility goddess. In Skyrim, uh, Mara is a handmaiden of Kine. In the Empire, she is a mother goddess. She is sometimes associated with Nur of the Anuad, the female principle of the cosmos that gave birth to creation. Depending on the religion, she is either married to Ak Akatosh or Lorcan, or the concubine of both. Mehrunes Dagon God of Destruction, popular Daedric power. He's associated with the natural dangers like fire, earthquakes, and floods. In some cultures, though, Dagon is merely a god of bloodshed and betrayal. He is an especially important deity in Morrowind, where the, he represents its nearly inhospitable terrain. Mathala, Mathala, Ad, Ad, Androgyne. Mathala is the web spinner or the spider god. In Morrowind, he slash she was the ancestor that taught the Chimer the skills they would need to evade their enemies or to kill them with the secret murder. Enemies were numerous in those days, since the Chimer were a small faction. He slash she, along with Boethia, organized the clan systems that eventually became the basis for the Great Houses. He slash she founded the Morag Tong, also called the Anticipation of Vivek. Molag Baal, God of Schemes, King of Rape. Daedric power of much importance in Morrowind. There, he is always the arch enemy of Boethia, the Prince of Plots. He is the main source of the obstacles to the Dunmer and the preceding Chimer, people in the legends. Molag Ball always tries to upset the bloodlines of the houses or otherwise ruin Dunmeri purity. A race of super monsters said to live in Molagamor are the result of his seduction of Vivek during the previous era. Morhouse, first breath of man, ancient cultural hero god of the uh, Syro Nordics, legend portrays him as the taker of the citadel and an act of mythic times that established human control over the valley heartland. He's often associated with the Nordic powers of Thum and therefore with Kinnereth. Morwa, uh, Teat god, Yagudan fertility goddess fundamental deity in the Yukudan pantheon and the favorite of tall papa's wives, still worshipped in various areas of Hammerfell, including Stras Mackay. Morwa is always portrayed as a fore as forearmed so that she can grab more husbands. Nerevar, god killer, the Chimeri king of Resdane, the golden age of old Veloth, slain during the battle of Red Mountain. Nerevar was the herald of the Triune Way and is the foremost of the saints of Dunmeri faith. He is said to have killed Dun Dumac, the last dwarven king, and feasted on his heart. Ansi, Bone Shaver, notable word god of the Rakudan Ragada. Ansi taught mankind how to pull their knives into swords. Orke, Old Knocker, a lone god of the Nords who seems 
to have taken up his worship during the Aldmeri rule of Atmora. Nords believe they once lived as long as elves until Orke appeared. Through heathen trickery, he fooled them into a bargain that bound them to the Count of Winters. At one time, legends say Nords only had a lifespan of six years due to Orke's foul magic. Shore showed up though, and through unknown means removed the curse, throwing most of it onto the nearby orcs. Finaster, hero god of the Somerset Isles, who taught the Altmer how to naturally live another hundred years by using a shorter walking stride. Rajin, footpad, thief god of the Khajiit, who grew up in the Black Kyrgo section of Senchal, the most famous burglar in elsewhere history. Rajin is said to have stolen a tattoo from the neck of the Empress Kintara, Kintira as she slept. Riemann, the Cyrodiil. Culture god hero of the Second Empire, Riemann was the greatest hero of the Akaviri Trouble. Indeed, he convinced the invaders to help him build his own empire, and he conquered all of Tamriel except for Morrowind. He instituted the rites of becoming emperor, which included the ritual Geas to the Amulet of Kings, a soul gem of immense power. His dynasty was ended by the Dunmeri Morek Tong at the end of the First Era, also called the Worldly God. Riddle Thar, Two Moons Dance, the Cosmic Order Deity of the Khajiiti. The Riddle Thar was revealed to elsewhere by the prophet Riddhar Ridata, the main. Rid Riddle Tar was more a set of guidelines by which to live than a single entity, but some of his avatars like to appear as humble messengers of the gods, also known as the Sugar God. Rupt Ga, Tall Papa, Chief Deity of the Yukudan Pantheon. Rupt Ga, more commonly known as uh, Tall Papa, was the first god to figure out how to survive the hunger of Sadakal. Following his lead, the other gods learned the walkabout, or process by which they can persist beyond one lifetime. Tall Papa set the stars in the sky to show lesser spirits how to do this too. When there were too many spirits to keep track of though, Ruptga Rupt created a helper out of the dead skin of past worlds. This helper is Sep, see below, who later created creates the world of mortals. Sadakal, world skin. Yakutan god of everything, a fusion of the concepts of Anu and Padme. Basically, Sadakal is much like the Nordic Alduin, who destroys one world to begin the next. In Yakutan mythology, Sadakal had done, and still does, this many times over, a cycle which prompted the birth of spirits that could survive the transition. These spirits ultimately become the Yakutan pantheon, popular god of the Alakir nomads. Shiagorath, the mad god. The fearful obeisance of Shugorath is widespread and is found in most Tamrielic quarters. Contemporary sources indicate that his roots are in Aldmeri creation stories. Therein, he is born when uh, Lorcan's divine spark is removed. One crucial myth calls him the Sithis shaped whole of the world. Shior, bad man. In Brentney, the bad man is the source of all strife. He seems to have started as a god of crop failure, but most modern theologians agree that he is a demonized ver version of the Nordic shore, born during the dark years after the fall of Sarthal. Sep, the snake, Yakutan version of Lorcan. Sep is born when Tall Papa creates someone to help him regulate the spirit trade. Sep, though, his, uh, though is driven crazy by the hunger of Satakal and he convinces some of the gods to help him make an easier alternative to the walkabout. This, of course, is the world as we know it, and the spirits who followed Sep became trapped here, to live out their lives as mortals. Sep is punished by Tal Papa for his transgressions, but his hunger lives on as a void in the stars, a non-space that tries to upset mortal entry into the far shores. Shazar, God of Man Cyrodiilic version of Lorcan, whose importance suffers when Akatosh comes to the force of Imperial, really Elysian religion. Shazar was the spirit behind all human undertaking, especially against Aldmeri aggression. He is sometimes associated with the founding of the first Cyrodiilic battle mages. In present age of racial tolerance, Shazar is all but forgotten. 
Shor, god of the underworld, a Nordic version of Lorcan, who takes sides with men after the creation of the world. Foreign gods, i.e. elven ones, conspire against him and bring about his defeat, dooming him to the underworld. At Moor and Mist depict him as a bloodthirsty warrior king who leads the Nords to victory over their Aldmeri oppressors time and again. Before his doom, Shor was the chief of the gods, sometimes also called Children's God. See Orke above. Sothasil, Mystery of Morrowind, God of the Dunmer, Sothasil is the least known of the Divine Tribunal. He is said to be reshaping the world from his hidden clockwork city. Stendar, God of Mercy, God of the Nine Divines, Stendar has evolved from his Nordic origins into a deity of compassion, or sometimes righteous rule. He is said to have accompanied Tiber Septim in his later years. In early Altmeri legends, Stendar is the apologist of men. Stun, uh, God of Ransom, Nordic precursor to Stendar, brother of Tsun, shield Dane of Shore. Stun uh, was a warrior god that fought against the Altmeri pantheon. He showed men how to take and the benefits of taking prisoners of war. Sirabane, Warlock's God. An Aldmeri god ancestor of magic, Sirbane aided the Bendu Olo in the fall of Slode through the judicious use of his magical ring. Sirbane saved many from the scourge of the Thrashian Plague. He is also called the Apprentice's God, for he is a favorite of the younger members of the Mages Guild. Tava, Bird God, Yakudan Spirit of the Air. Tava is the most famous for is most famous for leading the Yakudans to the Isle of Hearn after the destruction of their homeland. She has since become assimilated into the mythology of Kinnereth. She is still very popular in Hammerfell among sailors, and her shrines can be found in most port cities. Tiber Septim, Talos, the Dragonborn, heir to the seat of the Sundered Kings. Tiber Septim is the most important hero god of mankind. He conquered all of Tamriel and ushered in the Third Era and the Third Empire, also called Yzmir, Dragon of the North. Trinamek, strong god of the early Aldmer, in some places more popular than Oriel. He was a warrior spirit of the original elven tribes that led armies against the men. Boethia is said to have assumed his shape in some stories. He even eats Trinamek so that he could convince a, th a throng of Aldmer to listen to him, which led to their eventual chimeric conversion. He vanishes from the mythic stage after this to return as the dread Malakath. Altmeri propaganda portrays this as the dangers of Dunmeri influence. Tsun, extinct go Nordic god of trials against adversity, died defending shore from foreign gods. Tuwaka, tricky god, Yakudan god of souls. Tuwaka, before the creation of the world, was the god of nobody really cares. When Talpapa undertook the creation of the walkabout, Tuwaka found a purpose. He became the caretaker of the fear shores and continues to help red guards find their way into the afterlife. His cult is sometimes associated with Arche, in the more cosmopolitan religions of Hammerfell. Vivek, master of Morrowind, warrior poet god of the Dunmer. Vivek is the invisible keeper of the Holy Land, ever vigilant against the dark gods of the volcano. He slash she was, has saved the Dunmeri people from certain death on numerous occasions, most notably when he slash she taught them how to breathe water for a day, so that he slash she could flood Morrowind and kill the Akaviri invaders. CA, 2nd Era, 572. Xarxes. Xarxes is the god of ancestry and secret knowledge. He began as a scribe to Oriel and has kept track of all Aldmeri accomplishments, large and small, since the beginning of time. He created his wife, Agma, from his favorite moments in history. Yifri, god of the forest, most important deity of the Bosmeri pantheon. While Oriel, Time Dragon, might be the king of the gods, the Bosmer revere Yifri as the spirit of the now. According to the Wood Elves, after the creation of the mortal plane, 
Everything was in chaos. The first, mor the f the first mortals were turning into plants and animals and back again. Then, Yifri transformed himself into the first of the Elnafe, or Earth Bones. After these laws of nature were established, mortals had a semblance of safety in the new world because they could finally understand it. Yifri is sometimes called the storyteller for the lessons he taught the first Bosmer. Some Bosmers still possess the knowledge of the chaos times uh, they can use to great effect, the Wild Hunt. Yzmir, Dragon of the North. The Nordic aspect of Talos, he withstood the power of the Greybeard's voices long enough to hear their prophecy. Later, many Nords could not look on him without seeing a dragon. Zen, God of Toil. Bosmeri god of payment and kind. Studies indicate origins in both Ar Argonian and Akaviri mythologies, perhaps introduced into Valenwood by Cothringi sailors, ostensibly an agriculture deity. Zen sometimes proves to be an entity of much higher cosmic order. His worship died out shortly after the Kanatan flu. Zet, god of farms. Yakudan god of agriculture. Renounced his father after the world was created, which is why Tall Papa makes it so hard to grow food. Zenithar, god of work and commerce, traitor god. Member of the Nine Divines, Zenithar is understandably associated with Zen. In the Empire, however, he is far more cultivated. God of merchants and middle nobility. His worshippers say despite his mysterious origins, Zenithar is the god that will always win. Whew. That was really long. Holy shit. My cheeks hurt. Oh. My muscles are my face muscles are sore. Whew. And my my throat is super dry. So many pages, yeah. What was that? I'm not used to reading that much out loud. It, like, just straight. Man, lots of stuff in chat. I can't scroll up. But I guess winter showed up. Uh, hello? I don't, I don't know if you're still here. All names this so uh, yeah the book started very badly it was just all the names of the gods which a lot of them are hard to pronounce uh how's work going pretty good uh anyone here that is alive you a christian said he lives you don't count Ooh, oh my god <laughs> that is a uh... You definitely count, Christian. Jasper, sorry, but will not be watching the stream. Reading simulators is not fun to me, Lamau. It's all good. Everyone enjoys different things. Uh, winter, await. Oh, yeah, dragons don't exist. Okay, I'm not sure what that's referencing. Ah, disappears. Bro's still going. Yeah. This one's an actual book. Yeah, it is. That was a long one. So many names, so many pages. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it started off so boring, just listing every single name. And, like, some of these are just so hard. Like, names in, names in these games are so hard to pronounce sometimes. Um, but, like, the Yakudan gods... That's tough. <laughs> and the uh, the Elsewhere gods as well. Uh, the Elsewhere, that's the Khajiit gods. But, I mean, this is still pretty good. Uh, I did know a lot of this already. After all that, who's my favorite divine? Um, I've always liked Hermamora. Because he's an octopus. Or not really an octopus. He's got a bunch of tentacles. Um, this guy here. The woodland man. Um, he's he's a daedric god. And 
Daedric God of uh, Prince Daedric Prince of Knowledge, and uh, he's pretty cool. You're now a Tall Papa fan. That's <laughs> yeah, it's such a funny name. I did not know that was like I I don't know. I've never heard that before. Tall Papa. I think f just for that, I might. I'm a lot more a fan of him. Um, but based off of the book, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure. Because I like Hermamora a lot, but, you know, in this book, he, there's not much about him. Um, I mean... Where, uh, what was his name? Julianos? No, no, Magnus. Magnus is pretty interesting. He's pretty cool. I always love Malakath. Malakath's also fun. Uh, reanimated dung. Um, cause yeah, he gets eaten. Uh, you know, he's trying to Mac and then he gets eaten and then gets shit out and then turns into Malakath. <laughs> and then the orcs bathe in his, in the shit that, in the, you know, in the shit and get turned into orcs, you know, green skin and stuff. So he's, that's always a fun one. Um, yeah, I mean, the the thing is, most of the stuff I knew, I didn't know much about the, like, Yakutan, uh, gods, because there's not tons of info about them, and the, uh, the Khajiiti gods I also don't know much about, just because they're so hard to pronounce. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Tall Papa, he seems great. I loved, yeah, Tall Papa sounds pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's a lot of, sh <laughs> that's a lot of here. Damn. Man, that is, that is a lot. My goodness. Ooh, all right. Can I buy that book? Oh, I think I can. Uh, let's see. Friday's Faith. Hell yeah. Definitely want that. He does a walkabout, so he's canon Australian. What do you yeah. Mean? Yeah, the, the, the thing with walkabouts is pretty interesting as well. So basically, the world like goes in a cycle. Like the you know time goes in a cycle. Like yeah, time flows. Um, like the god of time is an Ouroboros, basically, right? Um, and then different parts of the Ouroboros are called different things, basically. So Akatosh is um, like the middle of the Ouroboros. Alduin's the end, the head, and stuff like that. And then basically the walkabout is you fi uh, they figure out a way to, you know, once uh, the Ouroboros is about to eat the part that you're on, you leave the snake and then come back on after the head goes past you. And that way you can, uh, you know, go into the new world that's created after your world the old world gets destroyed um so yeah that's that's cool and i think the yukudans because this is actually one of the most interesting parts about the so like phase out effects in magic the gathering kind of yeah it's like you're getting uh you know the you do a phase out in response to a board wipe i guess but the interesting thing about the Yakudans is they come from the previous world. Um, and, you know, they they walk, they walk did the walkabout and then survive, their entire race survived into the new world. 
and they're the only race in Tamriel that did that. Um, so that's that's the that's the uh, the Red Guards, the black people basically uh, of Skyrim, are the only people from the previous world. And the left-handed elves did it as well, but the Yakudin, uh, the Red Guards, and the left-handed elves uh, fought each other. And, uh, you know, wiped each other out. But they're the only ones. We prefer desert people. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, any good way to really say it. Uh, but desert people might be... I don't know. I'll just, I'll just say red guards. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the red guards, they've got some real cool lore there. I don't know. I like the very unique races. The people of Hammerfell. Right. Uh, you know, the, the Red Guards, they came from the previous world, uh, so that's real interesting. Like, the Argonians, they're made, you know, they're not, uh, they were made by the trees of, uh, of, um, Black Marsh rather than, like, by the gods or anything like that. Or, like, they don't descend from the gods, they were just, like, the trees, they looked at these humans and elves walking about, and they're like, hey, that's kind of cool, I want to do that. And then they they took a lizard, and then they're like, alright, we're gonna turn this into a human. Always thought the trees making the Argonians was hilarious. Yeah, same. I love the Argonians for that. Um, and, like, the orcs bathing in shit, and that's why their skin is green. That's hilarious. Um... I don't know, the Nords, the, like, the Imperials and the Bretons, their story isn't really super interesting. Didn't know the Orc lore until, until today? Yeah, Orc lore is great. Uh, that's, all, like, the, the reason why the Orc's skin is green and their lifespan is reduced. Because the Orcs are elves, right? Technically, um, they're elves just like everybody else. Uh, uh, your, um, but, yeah, so they, the reason their skin is green and their lifespan is the same as humans is because they just bathed in shit, uh, because they, like, wanted to keep following, Trinum, like, the, they wanted to keep following their god, so, like, alright, in, like, solidarity with our god, we're gonna bathe in the shit, um, and we'll, we'll keep following you. <laughs> You're a sucker for Bretons, though. Yeah, I mean, the Bretons, they don't have a cool origin story. But they do have some cool lore with, like, the kingdoms and stuff. Like, they're very much, like, their lore, like, their their history is very much like, um, you know, Europe, uh, old Europe inspired with, like, kings and uh, thiefdoms and stuff. We, that's That stuff's pretty interesting. But, like, their origin is basically just, oh... They were like, yeah, feudalism. Yeah, they have like cool lore like that, but like the way the Bretons were created, I guess, is basically just the elves had human slaves and then, you know, had had kids with their slaves and then Bretons were created. So I don't know. It's it's not the most fun origin story. But yeah, they're they're like the current stuff and some a lot of their history is pretty interesting. Uh, let's see. Wait, da, da, da. Ancestors of the Ancestors of the Dumber. I don't know if I read that one. Check. But yeah, I don't know. That's. I mean, I just always love the, the like origin stories are just so fun. To be devil's advocate, it's cool because it ties back to the elf. Uh. Domination period before the eras, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they helped end their dominance by sleeping with the slaves. Yeah, I mean, it's it is cool, like being uh, sort of descended from the elves as well, like. I mean, they're not really half-elf, but, you know, they've got 
elven characteristics. That's pretty cool. And uh, going into like how breeding between humans and elves is also kind of interesting. Um, I think the way it is is they inherit all the character like if a human and an elf have a baby it depends on uh, what race the mom is this applies to all races in the Elder Scrolls so if the mom is a human the baby is gonna be a human if the mom's an elf the baby is an elf I'm pretty sure that applies you know all the way across so Pokemon egg rules apply yeah but some of the traits of the father sometimes get passed down. So basically, the reasons the reason why the Bretons are, you know, humans is because, you know, the, the elves were, you know, sleeping and impregnating the human female slaves, not as much, you know, the other way. Um... So, you know, it's, it's still, they still have an interesting origin story. It's just not a, you know, it's not the most, like, fun origin story. It's a very, uh, you know, it's a very dark origin story for them. Uh, not as much the other way, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not as many, uh. You know, human male slaves sleeping with the, the women and impregnating them. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, still, still interesting. But not the most fun to think about, so I focus more on the, like, oh, how funny they bathed than shit. I don't even see Ancestor, the book I'm looking for, the Ancestors and whatever. I don't see this anywhere in, in my notebook. Oh, it's in the travel section. Why the fuck is it in the travel section? Ooh. Alright, I think my throat has calmed down enough to be able to read this book. Unless it's, like, insanely- oh my lord. This is another long one, isn't it? Okay. Uh... Okay. Let's see, have I written- have I- The Book of Life and Service of Dig Deep, yeah. That one's very s short. Pilgrim Path. This one... Okay. So I think I can read... I'll probably read... Uh, also, hold on. The book of... <laughs> so this book here, The Book of Life and Services, that's, that's a pretty thick-looking book. It's two pages long. It look, It's thicker than... Um, hold on, is it thicker than... Well, I guess I bought it, so I can't really see it, but... Yeah, this book, two pages, not even, is just as thick as this book, which is 16 pages. Alright, so I think I'll read the book, Book of Life and Service, and then either The Pilgrim's Path or Ancestors in the Dunmer. And then that'll, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, so, let's see. Let me try to find Book of Life and Service. I'll just read it first, and then... And... I'll leave it up to you, Christian, which one I... Which one I read after this, uh... Ancestors of the Dunmer, or Pilgrim's Path. You vote Dunmer? Okay. I'll read this one first. And then I'll mark that off, and then we'll read Ancestors and the Dunmer. The ranks of the blessed. Blessed are the bonemen, for they serve without self, in spirit forever. 
Blessed are the mistmen, for they blend in the glory of the transcendent spirit. Blessed are the wrathmen, for they render their rage unto the ages. Blessed are the masters, for they bridge the past and span the future. The litany of services, the boneman's oath, we die, we pray, we to, we pray, to live, we serve. The master's voice, you swore to serve your lord. Oh, so this is the, um, I guess this is about the, uh, what are they called? I mean, they're like the masters, they're like the weird floating crystal cubes that you, uh, uh, that are like, that pretty much control the, like, soul gems and stuff. Like, if you trap a soul, uh, it goes to the, the masters. Are they just called the masters? I feel like there's another another word before masters that they're usually called i don't remember it but yeah they're the bone men mist men and wrath men are in there in that data ground which cool thing about the the masters is i'm pretty sure that they were actually mortals who like became so powerful and good at dealing in souls that they made their own Daedric realm, essentially. And, you know, they're kind of immortal and stuff. But they're, like, not originally Daedra. But they still have a Daedric realm. They're not Daedric princes. They're just, like, these weird guys. <laughs> I don't... Not much is explained about them. They're pretty cool, though. Because, uh, yeah, they, they have their own Daedric realm, but they're not a Daedric prince. And usually, only Daedric princes have a Daedric realm. Like, it's a, it's a group, uh, you know, it's multiple people. It's the masters. It's not like a singular prince in owning the Daedric Realm. Uh, so, what was this book called? Books of Life and Service. I don't know, what the fuck would this be? In religion? It seems like it should be in religion. Yes, there it is. Catholic style chant? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Uh, book of life and service. Dude, it's so satisfying to put check marks next to all these names. I'm, I'm loving it. It's so nice to see the progress. Okay. I'm going to finish this cup off, I guess. Alright. Time to read. Ancestors in the Dunmer. So I guess this is about like how the Dunmer worship their ancestors, maybe? You know, there's tons of like tomb um, ancestral tombs and stuff. I was the one at the beginning of the stream. You know, the reason for the ancestral tombs is because they very much revere their ancestors and like they summon them for help and stuff. So probably gonna be pretty interesting because the Dunmer are the only ones who really do that. I'm pretty sure. All right, ancestors and the Dunmer. Ghosts walk among them. The departed spirits of the Dunmeri and perhaps those of all races persist after death. The knowledge and power of the departed ancestors benefits the bloodlines of Dunmeri houses. The bond between the living family members and mortal ancestors is partly blood, partly ritual, partly volatation, vol vol volition. Volitional. A member brought into the house through marriage binds himself through ritual and oath into the clan and gains communication and benefits from the clan's ancestors. However, his access to the ancestors is less than his offspring, and he retains some access to the ancestors of his own blood. The Family Shrine. Each residence has a family shrine. In poorer homes, it may be no more than a hearth or alcove where family relics are displayed and venerated. In wealthy homes, a room is set aside for the use of ancestors. This shrine is called the Waiting Door and represents the door to oblivion. Here, the family members pay their respects to their ancestors through sacrifice and prayer through oaths sworn upon duties and through reports on the affairs of the family. 
In return, the family may receive information, training, and blessings from the family's ancestors. The ancestors are thus the protectors of the home, and especially precincts of the waiting door. The Ghost Fence It is, f it is a family's most solemn duty to make sure their ancestors' remains are in interred properly in, the in a city of the dead such as Necrom. Here, the spirits draw comfort from one another against the, ch against the chill of the mortal world. However, as a sign of great, hum uh, as a great honor and sacrifice, an ancestor may grant that part of his remains be retained to serve as part of a ghost fence protecting the clan's shrine and family precincts. Such an arrangement is often part of the family member's will, that a knuckle bone shall be saved out of, his, out of his remains and incorporated with solemn magic and ceremony into a clan ghost fence. In more exceptional cases, an entire skeleton or even a preserved corpse may be bound into a ghost fence. These remains become a beacon and focus for ancestral spirits and for the spirits of the remains in particular. The more remains used to make a ghost fence, the more powerful the fence is and the most powerful mortals in life have the most powerful remains. The Great Ghost Fence was created by the Tribunal to hold back the Blight. It incorporates the bones of many heroes of the Temple and of House in Drill and Redron, who dedicated their spirits to the Temple and Clan as their surrogate families. The Ghost Fence also contains bones taken from the Catacombs of Necrom and the many battlefields of Morrowind. The Mortal Chill Spirits do not like to visit the mortal world, and they do so only out of duty and obligation. Spirits tell us that the other world is more pleasant, or at least more comfortable for spirits than our real world, which is cold, bitter, and full of pain and loss. Mad Spirits Spirits that are forced to remain in our world against their will may become mad spirits or ghosts. Some spirits are bound to this world because of some terrible circumstances of their death, or, be or because of some powerful emotional bond to a person, place, or a thing. These are called hauntings. Some spirits are captured and bound to enchanted items by wizards. If the binding is involuntary, the spirit usually goes mad. A willing spirit may or may not retain its sanity depending on the strength of the spirit and the wisdom of the enchanter. Some spirits are bound against their wills to protect family shrines. This unpleasant fate is reserved for those who have not served the family faithfully in life. Dutiful and honorable ancestral spirits often aid in the capture and binding of wayward spirits. These spirits usually go mad and make terrifying guardians. They are ritually prevented from harming mortals of their clans, but that does not necessarily incur discourage them from mischief or peevish behavior. They are exceedingly dangerous for intruders. At the same time, if an intruder can penetrate the spirit's madness and play upon the spirit's resentment of his own clan, the angry spirits may be manipulated. Uh, okay. Oblivion. The existence of oblivion is acknowledged by all Tamrielic cultures, but there is little agreement on the nature of that other world, other than it is the place where the Aedra and Daedra live and that communication and travel are possible between this world and oblivion through magic and ritual. The Dunwar do not emphasize the distinction between this world and oblivion, as do the human cultures of Tamriel. They regard our world and the other world as a whole, with many paths from one end to the other, rather than two separate worlds of different natures with distinct borders. This philosophical philosophical viewpoint may account for the greater affinity of elves for magic and its practices. Foreign views of Dunmeri ancestor worship and spirit magic. The Altmeri and Bosmeri cultures also venerate their ancestors, but only by respecting the orderly and blissful passage of these spirits from this world to the next. That is, Wood Elves and High Elves believe it is cruel and unnatural to encourage the spirits of the dead to linger in our world. Even more grotesque and repugnant is the display of bodily remains of the ancestors in ghost fences and ash pits. 
The representation of finger bones in a family shrine, for example, is sacrilegious to the Bosmer, who eat their dead, and barbaric to the Altmer, who inter their dead. The human cultures of Tamriel are ignorant and fearful of Dark Elves and their culture, considering them to be inhuman and evil, like orcs and Argonians, but more sophisticated. The human populations of Tamriel associate Dunmeri ancestor worship and spirit magic with necromancy. In fact, this association of Dark Elves with necromancy is at least partly responsible for the dark reputation of the Dunmer throughout Tamriel. This is generally an, in, an ignorant misconception, for necromancy outside the acceptable clan rituals is a most abhorrent abomination in the eyes of the Dunmer. The Dark Elves would even think of, practices, of practicing sorcerous necromancy upon any Dark Elf or upon the remains of any Dark Elf. However, Dark Elves consider the human and orcish races to be no more than animals. There is no injunction against necromancy upon such remains, or on the remains of any animal, bird, or insect. Imperial pol policy officially recognizes the, pa the practices of Dunmeri ancestors' veneration and spirit magic as a religion, and protects their freedom to pursue such practices so long as they do not threaten the security of the Empire. Privately, most Imperial officials and traders believe Dark Elf ancestor worship and displays of remains are barbaric or even necromantic. Telvanni Necromancy The Telvanni are adept masters of necromancy. They do not, however, practice necromancy upon the remains of Dark Elves. Sane Telvanni regard such practices with loathing and righteous anger. They do practice necromancy upon the remains of animals and upon re the remains of humans, orcs, and Argonians, who are technically no more than animals in Morrowind. Publisher's Note This book was written by an unknown scholar as a guide for foreign visitors to Morrowind shortly after the armistices was signed. Many of these practices have since fallen into disfavor. The most obvious changes are those regarding the practice of necromancy and the Great Ghost Fence. Dunmer today regard necromancy upon any of the accepted races as an abomination. The Ghost Fence has forced many changes in the practice of ancestor worship, with a vast majority of ancestor remains going to strengthen the Ghost Fence. Around the mountain of Dagoth Ur, there are very few clan Ghost Fences in Morrowind. The Temple discourages such practices among the houses as selfish. The upkeep of a family tombs and private waiting doors has also fallen into disfavor as very few remains have been buried in these tombs and shrines since the armistices. In recent years, most of the Dunmer venerate a small portion of their ancestors' remains kept at a local temple. Uh, do you think the ghost fence knows the box ghost? I think they would get along very well. When I first played Morrowind, I didn't know what the ghost fence was. Um, like the Grace go Ghost Fence around the mountain. So, um, I like, essentially, what I ended up doing was, like, there's like a official way to like go through it, and there's like a passageway, the, the way you're supposed to go, um, there's a way you're supposed to go through it, but what I ended up doing is there's a, um, there's a spell that lets you just float, uh, a levitation spell, and I just hopped over the fence. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's, there's nothing stopping you. Like, I thought it was just, like, some weird world border that had, like, an obvious way to go over it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. I only, like, recently learned what the ghost, like, the ghost fence, like, that was, that's the name of the fence, is the ghost fence, and only now learned it's powered by like the remains of dead Dunmer I guess little did they know the gates to oblivion are just eyes of Mordor <laughs> now I feel bad for all your necromancer dark elf builds yeah I mean you can just go by the uh you know they're a Telvanni and they don't like the imperial imperial rule and they still consider the Argonians and humans and uh, 
and stuff to be no more than animals. So, you know, you don't have to feel too bad for them about it, but you do have to, you know, they are, you know, very much going to be a villainous build at that point. Oh, you specifically brought back Dark Elves. Oof, yeah, no. It's an abomination. How horrible. That's those are, you you made some of the most v villainous necromancer builds right there. The classic float, yeah, I know. Floating is great. Levitation is so good. Uh, there's like no problems with it, and you know they totally should have kept it in like Skyrim and stuff. You'll not be sleeping soundly tonight. Yeah. Oh man, dude. Today was good. Some really good books. Damn. I'm just a dude. I'm just enjoying this series more and more every time I, every time I like do another stream. I don't know. I'm so glad I decided to do this stream. I like. I wasn't sure at all if I was gonna enjoy it. I was like, yeah, it would probably be interesting, but you know, I was like, is it really? Um, I thought it was gonna be kind of. You know, I thought it might be kind of boring. But dude, it's so good. I love it, dude. The 2,920 books, the first, uh, the last year, the first era or whatever it is, those books are so good as well. I can't believe it. The last, yeah, last year, first era. Uh, but yeah, born for Jen, <laughs> Jasper. Yeah, there's a couple of people. Uh, a lot of the like younger audience, I guess, isn't all too into it. But, you know, everyone's into different things. Uh, next Friday can't come soon enough. Dude, yeah, I can't wait for next Friday either. Alright, time to save. Yeah, my, my throne of fucking am old, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. No, the, the like, you know. The kids that watch YouTube aren't all too into it. I don't know. Re finding and reading all the books in Morrowind is like a super niche audience. You know, most people aren't all too into that. Um, but yeah, uh, let me... Hold on. Give it... Let me just. Ah, uh, the elders. So, this is the video that was. I'll just send you the name of the video. Put it in here. So, that is the the title of the video that essentially inspired me to do this, partially at least. This video is so good. I definitely recommend watching it. It is uh. One of my favorite videos I've ever watched. Alright, yeah. The whole Unraveled series that he did was pretty good. Yes, channel sounded dope, so I'm going to go check him out later. Yeah, this is... So, this video is, like, on a channel that he's not using anymore. He has his own YouTube channel as well, but, yeah. Like, this is a company channel or whatever. But, yeah. Whatever. But yeah, the, the guy's name is Brian David Gilbert. He has his own channel as well. That's pretty good. But yeah, the Unraveled series on uh, uh, there is like 29 videos that are all like some crazy thing where it's like super niche stuff. Um, it's really good. Uh, the Unraveled series. Super good. You sold me when you made a Walu Waluigi video. Dude, that one's so good as well. I, <laughs> I love Waluigi. Waluigi is, like, one of my obsessions. You know, I was so mad when they didn't put him in Smash Bros. Same. Dude, hell yeah. Dude, Waluigi is so cool. Nobody appreciates him <laughs> like, uh, like he should be appreciated. He's, oh, dude, Waluigi's the best. 
Uh, yeah, his, his Waluigi video is great as well. The goat. Yeah, exactly. He's so good. I mean, <laughs> I used to like, I used to put Waluigi, I would like hide him in every single project. I put him at school. I would like hide a little picture of him somewhere in the project. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Constantly put down for no reason. Yeah. Everyone just doesn't like him for some reason. Okay, that's a bit much. Yeah, I did this. I did that with um, Waluigi and Nicolas Cage. I just always use him in Mario Party. Mm. No, I I I always used him when I could. Like in like um uh, like my obsession with Waluigi started in Mario Kart. I I would always play Waluigi in Mario Kart. That's where it started. And then, you know, my obsession with him never receded. It just kept growing. Uh, well, I guess it has receded now. But, you know, in high school I was a peak Waluigi enjoyer. Nick Cage, oh my god, that stank as fuck. Yeah, dude, Nick Cage, so good. I have like, <laughs> so next to my bed I have this um, sort of like display shelf. And, uh, I have five Nicolas Cage movies that pretty much, you know, his face is on the cover and it's like pointed at my bed. So he's always watching me sleep, essentially. Uh, which now that I say it like that is, uh, that sounds pretty weird. Display shelf, more like Nick Cage shrine. Yeah, well, I mean, the movies I've got on there are, uh... So it's The World's End, Hot Fuzz, and uh, Shaun of the Dead. Those aren't Nick Cage, but then the Nick Cage ones I have are National Treasure, National Treasure 2, uh, Lord of War, uh, Guarding Tess, and, and Face Off. I have a couple more, but they're not all on the shelf. And... Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of other ones up there, but yeah, those, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've got like Penguins of Madagascar and uh, Shrek. No Ghost Rider. Wow, the disrespect. I don't have Ghost Rider. If, I, if I'd if i seen it in the thrift store, I would have picked it up right away. But, you know, I get all my movies from the thrift store, so... I sadly don't have all 70 movies that he's in. Because it's like 20 bucks to buy... Like, off of Amazon, probably. But at the thrift store, it's like 2 bucks. If, you know, you know no, <laughs> they don't have a good selection, but... But yeah, I mean, if, if it was there, I would snap it up in a second right away. I love Ghost Rider. I don't know why people say it's a bad movie. It's it's so good. I honestly don't get it. Your favorite fr thrift store find was an old Dwayne The Rock Johnson autobiography. He, <laughs> that he wrote totally in character. <laughs> what? That sounds crazy. No way. That's real? Dude, it was WWF branded. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess that makes a little bit more sense. But that's crazy. It was so good. Damn good. Ah, oh, dude, that sounds hilarious. That and Tim Tim Allen autobiography. That's hilarious. Auto. The Rock Says? Is that what it's called? <laughs> that's so funny. I can't believe it. Yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, apparently they they have uh, like other wrestlers as well did that as well. Like there's the Stone Cold Truth. Oh my god. Tim Allen has some weird blog he used to post on, and man, he's so weird. Yeah, that is hilarious. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay, I, I definitely have to read that now. Okay. Oh my goodness. I think it's sadly time for me to go to bed, though. Uh, but... Yeah, had a pretty great time. I can't believe I found another Waluigi Enjoyer. And Nick Cage Enjoyer. That's crazy. Um, But, yeah. Waluigi, bro, yeah. He's great. Oh, let's see. Alright, uh... Oh yeah, I'm the superstar. Oh, yo. I was oh, I was hoping it was just gonna do the wah, because it was a five second clip, but it just did a bunch of bunch of noises. Oh well. <laughs> wah. I can't do the no. I can't. I can't believe I still can't do the noise. I've tried to like. I mean, I back in the day, I tried to. Per- perfect it but i just i was never able to do it right dude it's so easy it just doesn't it never sounded good enough i was you know i could never replicate the waluigi charm and i would like i would record myself saying it and then i would like i would yeah i would like record myself saying it and then listen back to it i was like "Mm, it's not quite there Gotta learn to sing through your nose. I don't know. That just sounds like a baby crying. Boom. Maybe I have to listen back to it again, but that was so much better, yeah. I mean, the first couple times I wasn't trying super hard, I guess. That time I was <laughs> I was trying. Uh, probably doesn't sound great to my own ears as well. So maybe, maybe I just gotta listen back to it, but... Thank you for the encouragement. I'll treasure it. Treasure this sacred knowledge of how to do the wah. Uh, how to do the wah. A good wah. A good wah is in the heart. Yeah. I feel. I don't know if I did those right. But thank you very much. Yeah. It's got to be from the heart. Especially the last one. I don't think it was super in the heart. But. Alright. I'm going to call it a night. And, uh, yeah, I hope you have a good night, good day, whatever time zone you're in. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time today. And, yeah, alright, peace.